Hi, I'm wearing a different hoodie than in the video. Logi.gg slash Datto to save 10% on Logitech and Logitech G goodies on their website. Use the link. Get some stuff. Save some money. It's on the... I don't want to say it's on the house. It's on me. 10% of it is... <laughs> anyway. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to... Uh, where today, you are finally just going to be able to copy me directly as I drop the main 10... 11 loadouts that I am currently using and will probably be using until final shape and potentially beyond the final shape depending on like what the seasonal artifact looks like. Uh, not all the builds here you're going to see are the most super optimized builds in the game. Contrary to popular belief, I do not optimize every single moment of gameplay. Some builds might be hyper optimized but other builds are just stuff that I find to be more fun or at least different to what you see other content creators running just to keep things a little bit fresh. I also cover all of my fashion if you're wondering what stuff I've been using. It's gonna be a long Destiny winter and I figure that if there's a time to experiment with your playstyle to keep things fresh, try out new builds, it's probably now. My Pyrogale Titan is probably my most commonly used build at the moment. Pyrogale not only changes your hammer super into a one-off, which I think is way better than its normal version outside of its ability to like stun lock big targets, um, but it also enhances your consecration a little bit. Consecration is an ability that doesn't get a ton of love because Sunspots and Roaring Flames are kind of the foundation of the bonk build TM, uh, which is both a really easy build to use and both of those aspects just mesh really well together. I made this build because I wanted to make a Consecration build just for the fun of it. I also spec completely into Ignition and Scorch with my Fragments, uh, minus Torches, which gives the constantly valuable Radiant effect for boosting my weapon damage and giving me Anti-Barrier. That being said, this is not really a build I take into Grandmaster content. This is a build for almost everything else in the game. Seasonal activities, raiding, and dungeons, and all that kind of stuff, because Consecration, even though it has some amount of range, it's still a melee attack, and I don't run a lot of restoration effects with this particular setup. That being said, sunspots tend to be more than enough in terms of like my restoration needs. I run with Soul Invictus, not Roaring Flames. I switch between modding for tons of melee energy and modding for weapon damage, depending on what I'm actually doing. Sometimes a hybrid of the two. I like this build because it actually allows me to use my weapons without feeling like I'm being less effective by using my weapons. But I also get to use my big melee ability often enough that it feels like I'm using some kind of a build. I use Conditional Finality, Callous Mini Tool, and Fixed Odds, dialing up my Scorch and my Ignition capabilities to the maximum. It's good ad clear. It's a decent option for single target. But if I need to go harder into single target, I will rotate to a Linear Fusion or a Rocket Launcher. Next is a build that is considerably more optimized and more mainstream, and that is the Giga Burst Damage Strand Titan setup without the Navigator. The Navigator Burst setup involves making a grapple point with the Navigator and then just spamming it over and over for grapple melees. Um, not what I really do, but it's used quite a lot in like speedrun content and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very, very good when you can optimize its use. My setup is probably the next best option uh, using a one-two punch shotgun in Swordbreaker, but you know, any one-two punch shotgun works. A good primary weapon, I use the Iclos SMG, but I'm probably going to rotate over to Subjunctive or at least try it out in the very, very near future. And Tractor Cannon for even more damage. Add in Syntheseps and you can see why this build is capable of so much damage and why it just got nerfed very recently. You boop with Tractor, you hit with Shoddy for one-two punch, you do two melees because you can fit in two. Uh, another shoddy, another melee, reboop, pop super, use super, then do another three melees with the one-two punch shotgun until you're completely out of cooldowns. This gives you a massive amount of single target damage, but once you've completed the combo in its entirety, you're basically completely tapped out. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the time, that's going to be more than enough to take out most targets maybe besides bosses but even some bosses are just going to completely melt but yeah once you're out of all your stuff you're just kind of like all right 
what do I do now? Banner of War is a staple for this, and I use Into the Fray for woven mail on Tangle effect to further boost my survivability. Also, don't forget that you can use finishers to activate Banner of War in case you don't want to use a melee charge, in case you don't have an uncharged melee bound somewhere on your keyboard or controller or whatever. Fragments are pretty typical for Strand. Uh, you have Fury, Warding, Generation, although I've been on Propagation for some Unraveling Rounds, which on a shotgun isn't hugely important, but also I don't think there are many other things that are going to give you like a huge burst of value otherwise. Mods are completely based on melee energy or staying alive for the most part, since I think that's really all you're going to need. Um, I sometimes run a holster mod for Void, since tractor cannon reloads are cringe, and if you want tractor cannon right away, it's very annoying to, you know, reload in the middle of that. The build is usable pretty much everywhere. Raids, dungeons, seasonal stuff, GMs too. Uh, but you got to know what you're doing at least a little bit in a GM to use this setup. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to die a lot. So give this some practice first in something in between like seasonal and GM content. Uh, if you want to go for the non-burst damage setup, you're just going to rotate in Monte Carlo to feed you steady amounts of melee energy. Way more powered melee attacks that can still hit hard with... Banner of War and Synthos and a one-two punch shotgun, but you don't have the same kind of downtime that you do if you're running something like Tractor Cannon. My main Grandmaster Titan setup for a more conservative play style has been the same for the entire year, even with the nerfs to suspend. I'm on a Bayant Leap, and the entire point is to just have good suspend capabilities to stun champions or shut down big targets even if only for a much briefer time than we have been used to. Combine this with a very strong weapon loadout in Quicksilver Storm, your choice of special weapon, I opt for like a fusion or a wave frame, uh, and commemoration, one of the best machine guns in the game, or whatever good, you know, machine gun that you might have, and you have what I think is a very, very ideal but easy setup for tackling GM content, at least until they stop giving auto rifles anti-champion perks, Quicksilver Storm was my weapon of the year for 2023, and it certainly helped that it had anti-champion capabilities all year round. I like this setup because it doesn't get really complicated. It's just guns, it's some suspend effects, and that's it. So this build isn't as intense as the previous two, as it is considerably more weapon focused. This is a GM specific setup where we want less risk, and where we can let Quicksilver Storm do most of the work with its firepower. Into the Fray and Dranger's Lash continue to be my aspects. Uh, they have been my aspects for the entire year that I've been using this build, but if you just cannot give up Banner of War, that's okay, but it just, to me, it's not what I wanted to accomplish with this setup. Uh, this build is for people who don't want to get too intense with build crafting or remembering ability combos or anything like that. It's just some guns, and some suspends with some survivability. Finally, my Arc Titan setup, which is one that I haven't busted out in a little while, but recently started to play again. This is the Big Punch setup with Point Contact Cannon Brace, which received a very healthy buff some time ago. The premise of this build is very similar to the Pyrogale setup. In fact, it is literally just the Arc version, or rather, like, Pyrogale is the solar version of this. You do a big punch, you get back as much melee energy as possible for another punch, and then you use your guns in the meantime. It's just a matter of what flavor do you want your punch? Do you want it arc? Do you want it solar? I like point contact because it's incredibly forgiving. You can completely whiff a melee, but if there's still some amount of enemies nearby, you're still going to AoE some stuff around you. I also like doing a big punch less often versus many smaller punches more often. If you like many smaller punches, Insurmountable Skull Fort is probably gonna be your move. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. I am rolling with Knockout and Touch of Thunder, which is a shell of its former self, but it's still not the worst pick, with other melee-based fragments to go along with it. I still do go for Shock and Ions for Ionic Traces and Jolt Effects, although I suppose Spark of Discharge is also quite viable. This is a build that you can definitely fine-tune to your liking when it comes to fragments, though. And again, much like my Pyrogale setup, this is not one that I use in GM content, especially because I like to charge my melee attacks 
to their maximum power pretty much every single time if possible. And standing completely still in a GM, not the play. Now we're moving to Warlock, of which I have three builds that I'm running pretty actively. The first one, which we talked about quite recently, it's the Briarbinds Touch of Malice build from Season of the Witch. The premise of this build is to just spread as many children of the old gods to as many targets as possible and beat them down with the somewhat recently buffed Touch of Malice while gaining tons and tons of ability energy. This is another very weapon-based loadout, so there isn't a ton of ability stuff going on. We're stacking a lot of class ability energy effects and basically just living in rifts as much as possible since they spawn in new children when you plant one. And remember that you can have multiple children spawned in at once, as many as you're capable of spawning, really. Uh, aspects and fragments shouldn't be too surprising here, Child of the Old Gods, and Feed the Void. I know Devour as a whole got nerfed recently and that gaining Devour isn't that hard of a feat, but I personally wasn't using Chaos Accelerant that much. I just wasn't charging my grenades, so I said, screw it, I'm just gonna kill everything with Touch of Malice. My fragments are all based on Devour, making it longer, proccing it, or making Void Breaches to proc it, which also give me class ability energy. Even Echo of Vigilance, I have equipped in case I get myself into a messy situation. This build is great for GMs since you're going to have weaken on basically everything. But if you want to use Touch of Malice, you kind of need to hope that scouts have anti-champion something. Yes, the blinding attack can help, but it's not really something I want to rely on in a GM. You can also use this build anywhere in the game, although I wouldn't be relying on Touch of Malice as your main damage dealer if you're like doing, you know, a dungeon or, you know, raid and you need some actual boss damage. Also, I realize I have Nova Warp <laughs> equipped in this footage. I run Nova Warp just because I wanted to run something different, uh, but you should really just run Cataclysm in, in most situations. I am gonna actually talk about the fashion on this character uh, because this is probably one of the favorite fashion setups that I have across all characters. Uh, I'm using plated Lupinus on basically the whole set with Helm of the Taken King and the Ephotic Lameller robes. Lameller? Lameller robes from Season of the Deeps Season Pass to create sort of this like light show effect across my entire character. I absolutely love this fashion. I think it's so, so sick. Next up is a stasis build in Osmiomancy Gloves. I know stasis, not really the most popular, but this build is still incredibly good at crowd control if that is something your group needs in the Grandmaster world, but it also has life outside of Grandmasters too. You could use Agar Scepter here if you want, but a more traditional weapon loadout is totally fine as a lot of the freeze potential is gonna come from the build itself. Although if you did wanna use some kind of a headstone weapon, Certainly not going to say no to that. In GM world, I think Bleak Watcher is simply too powerful for most people to give up with, with its crowd control potential. That being said, if you're at the highest end of the skill band, GMs have gotten easier as we've gotten more powerful. So even in GMs, things can move too quickly for this build. This is great for areas where you know you're going to get to bunker down for a little bit and sit for a while. You toss out a couple of turrets and you just let them go to town. I got interested in this build without Bleak Watcher, just to see what regular cold snaps were like. And I think if you wanna run this setup in those lower level pieces of content, this is the way to go. You don't need to worry about holding grenades to charge them up. You don't need to wait for them to freeze stuff. You just, are, you're making things happen immediately and Ice Flitter bolt, bolts, bolts just spreads it around. Frost Pulse versus Glacial Harvest in terms of your aspects take your pick there just make sure that if you're going with harvest that you're actually using your melee on cooldown otherwise you're going to waste a lot of its potential the only flaw in this build is that at the lowest levels you're going to be killing stuff faster than cold snap grenades will be able to actually reach their target so if you want things to chain properly you kind of need to wait for your cold snaps to trigger which isn't always gonna be like feasible or you know, maybe somebody else hits your target before the cold snap gets there or they just kind of bug out or whatever. That's the only kind of like, ooh. Fragments, they're kind of your choice. It, there's definitely some things that you lock in, but there's still a ton of flexibility with regards to how you like to play. More offensive, more defensive. 
mess around and see what you like. I'm still fine tuning what I like and don't like on like a, a play session basis. This is one of the better stasis setups in the game right now. So if you are ever looking for some kind of change of pace, try this out, especially without Bleak Watcher. It's a lot more action packed than I think people really realize. My final build on Warlock is a build that I've used on and off for over a year now, and that is the Fallen Sunstar Cold Heart setup to spawn tons of Ionic Traces for ability energy and spamming abilities everywhere while dealing high damage with Cold Heart. However, ever since the double special nerfs, this build doesn't get to use Cold Heart as much as it used to back in the day. You do have to be much more liberal about swapping other weapons in order to get enemies to drop special ammo. They're not dropping it as much if you're just beaming everything with Cold Heart. I use Song of Your Ute, and I just basically ping-ponged back and forth between the two. It's not like the build itself isn't working anymore. It totally is but it's just best when you're using Cold Heart and when you're using Cold Heart as much as humanly possible. So now that you can't do that as much as you used to, it's kind of like, eh, but I mean, oh no, I have to go to one of the best machine guns in the game. What am I going to do? Shock, Ions, both return for our fragments on Arc, but I use Beacon and Brilliance for the blinding effect since Cold Heart is a special weapon and thus will trigger these effects. Uh, we stack all of this with Electrostatic Mind and Arc Soul just to drop as much damage as humanly possible with Cold Heart with our abilities. You would think that this would be more of a single target build, and it definitely does well against certain single targets, but I still mainly use this for ad clear since if you have a really big target, you probably want to use a better weapon for that. This is not exactly a GM build. I have used it in GMs before. I just don't think it's going to be anybody's like first priority. I don't know how much I'm even really taking into master content. This to me is, it feels a bit more of like a, you know, I'm just here to have a good time kind of a build. It's something where you can just kind of mess around and have fun. You might be wondering why I didn't show any sort of like Well of Radiance build. And that's because number one, a lot of my friends main Warlock, uh, they play it much more than I do, so they'll just use it themselves. And two, it's a boring build because you just throw on Phoenix Protocol and that's it. I do also have a Sunbracers build, but it was built specifically for soloing dungeons and is otherwise not a build that I really use in my day to day. That's not to say that it's bad or anything, because it's incredibly good. One of the best Warlock builds out there. But it's it's also a setup that's been around for a while, and I've, I've played it to death already. The build itself is also just literally put on Sun Bracers, uh, trigger them, and then throw in a little bit of Restoration as well. And, and that's about it. So I've played it to death. My other friends play Warlock, so that's why I don't really do too much there. Hunters. I also have three, now four builds that I tend to run. The first is all reliable arc melee hunter. This build is basically unchanged from every other time I've ever spoken about it. You got lethal current, you got flow state, combination blow with a one-two punch shotgun, and tractor cannon if you want a little extra oomph. Uh, The entire goal of this setup is to get combination blow times three and keep it alive as much as possible. The main annoyance with this build though is that lethal current is really good at killing your target if you don't kill it with the melee itself, which can make stacking combination blow really annoying since you then need to hunt down a new target. It is worth trying to get through this pain though, as combination blow times three with one-two punch, with tractor, with liar's handshake, if you're running that instead of assassin's cowl because you're not afraid of anything, is gonna seriously damage whatever you're punching. You're clobbering champions. You're clobbering big targets. It is really, really strong. But another downside is that you need to keep up this insane pace pretty much at all times because revving the engine back up in something like a GM can be pretty tough to do. Even just like getting started can be a little bit tough. It's just very rewarding when you reach the peak though. In anything less than GM or master content, it's obviously not very hard to you know, like pull the ripcord, essentially. This can be a GM build. It's quite strong there, but it takes some work to get used to, and people who aren't able to play this build well are going to be a detriment. You're just going to be constantly dying over and over again if you don't really know how to navigate the you know thing that you're in. It definitely takes some practice to get used to this setup 
do it in lower tier content first, get used to it. If you really learn this setup, it can be insanely efficient and fast in GM content, but in anything lower than like master, you're just gonna obliterate everything with melees. There's very little gun work that needs to be done here. Next up is the facade strand hunter build. I think this build is one of the most fun builds in the game right now. This is similar to my strand Titan Grand Master setup in that we're using guns a lot of the time, but we're swapping out the suspend effects for grapples. We're using Sir Tarachne's Facade to gain Woven Mail when grappling, a lot of survivability. We're using Whirling Maelstrom to turn Tangles into Death Balls. We're using our Grapple on the Maelstroms to get free Grapple Melees. We're using strong weapons like Quicksilver, a Fusion, and a Machine Gun in between all of that to continue to pump out damage. Our Crowd Control is almost non-existent, uh, but we're going to be doing literally everything else otherwise and flying through the air while doing it. The reason this is viable in GMs, I think is mainly because of Woven Mail, but also because of Whirling Maelstrom. Whirling Maelstrom, very, very strong effect, very high amount of damage. Um, if we didn't have Woven Mail, I wouldn't be using this specific setup in GMs. Uh, and even then, only certain GMs are really gonna be able to maximize the potential of this setup. Uh, I, I think it's better for high density strikes and activities like like, like, I would use it in a heist battleground, but I wouldn't use it in the corrupted. You know what I mean? Like, y you gotta have the right amount of enemy density, and you gotta have the right amount of, like, rooms to fight in. It's, it's a vibe, you know? You gotta vibe it out. If you haven't tried out this setup yet, I highly recommend that you do so. It's another one of these sort of hybrid ability and gun-based builds that I've been leaning on during the second half of this expansion cycle, just cause, you know, sometimes I just wanna use my guns, I wanna use a little half and half. You know, sometimes I don't wanna be all guns, but I don't also wanna be all ability. Finally, Nighthawk and Galanor Hunter have made massive comebacks because Celestial Nighthawk and Shards of Galanor are both very, very good. Both setups revolve around getting as much super energy as possible. My friends have been asking me to farm Master Templar in order to get a Thresh Fatebringer for Nighthawk. So if you have one of those, bust it out. So for Nighthawk, the goal of the build is to get precision kills. There isn't a lot in Solar Hunter that's going to enable you to do that other than like on your mark, but that just gives you like reload speed. It's pretty much all on you to get precision kills and then generate super energy however you can, maybe through siphon mods or other effects. I'm not too crazy about this build when playing by myself, although you do get all of the kills, so no one to, you know, worry about kill stealing. I think it does a bit better in a group, especially if you have another Nighthawk Hunter who is just chaining shots back and forth with you and you can just pick up each other's orbs. I ran that setup recently in the Corrupted GM and we could just chain insta-kill champions like it was nothing. Although missing a shot is a little devastating. Galanor Hunter, on the other hand, is a bit more solo friendly, but it's not as high level content friendly since the hope is that you're just spamming knives at everything that moves, stacking every melee based mod in the game for super energy, and then getting supers every 30 seconds. Much easier to do in the coil than it is in something like a master or GM piece of content. Raids, dungeons, both fine there, as long as there is enough to constantly feed your supers so that you can keep chaining them over and over. Those are all of the core builds that I'm currently running and have been running. Please take this opportunity to share your own builds in the comments that you have been running. I plan on doing something with my live stream where I take viewer builds for a spin to see what y'all are playing with. And if I can turn that into some content, then you might see a little follow-up on the channel here soon. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you next time.